everyone and welcome to the Bible Guy. Should Christianity be taught in schools? So this question was raised because of a high court decision in Northern Ireland this week which said that it was against someone's human rights to teach Christianity exclusively. So a seven-year-old girl attended a school in Belfast and her parents, her father in particular and herself, took this case to the high court and it was decided that a Christian-focused religious education solely exclusively was unlawful uh, and the High Court made this ruling that it was a breach of human rights. And they said that the exclusion of all of their faiths violated educational entitlements which has been protected by the European Convention of Human Rights. And that was on our news feed this week. So I thought I would look at that and ask the question, should Christianity be taught in our schools? Now before I look at that question, I'll look at the question, should Christianity be taught exclusively in our schools? And I might give a potentially surprising answer to that question in that I don't think it should be. And in fact, I kind of agree with the High Court ruling that um, to teach exclusively about Christianity only is an infringement potentially of this person's human rights in terms of worldviews, etc. Um, and the point that I would have on this is I agree that they shouldn't necessarily teach one faith. Uh, we shouldn't force the view on everyone, assuming that they will follow, or that they do follow, or that they will follow, um, this isn't right. Now, you ask the question, well, why? Well, first of all, teaching it exclusively in a society that's a secular society, we, we have to acknowledge that this is not a Christian society Britain in particular and other societies I know are not exclusively Christian. Um, so why should we force our view, again that Christianity is the one exclusive worldview, that its faith is right, why should we force that on everyone else? People need to make their own decisions and I would say alongside that in terms of teaching anything as Jesus would have said himself, you know, and as you see him demonstrating, it's important to know your audience. You know, who are my audience? Are they all Christian? Do they have signed up to this Christian viewpoint or have they not signed up to it at all? In the case of that seven-year-old and their family, very much humanist, atheist persuasion. And I want to say something for a moment in terms of teaching Christianity exclusively. Um, to do that, in my view, to a, a non-religious group, um, to force it upon them essentially, is actually harmful. It actually harms the truthfulness of what is being taught. My experience growing up um, um, taught me this. Um, again, subscribing to the Catholicism and the Catholic faith growing up, it was taught and assumed that you were baptized into it as a child, therefore you follow it your whole life, regardless of where your path took you in life. And it was taught the people were, to my experience, turned a deaf ear did not follow or listen to it one little bit. And when they left the, the church building, they ridiculed and undermined it from the beginning of the week to the end until they were back in the church again, where they would then say nothing. So this, what was being taught, was constantly being undermined because the people who were hearing it had not subscribed to this viewpoint at all. And you just have to think about Jesus in terms of him offering the good news. He would offer the good news to those who wanted to listen. And he would filter out those who didn't want to listen. And anyone that didn't want to subscribe to his viewpoint, yeah, he might give argumentation to help you come in, but he certainly wouldn't force it upon you. You know, we should not face our, force our views on anyone. In my opinion, we sh as Christians being in a secular society, we're not legislating for society to implement Christian values where they don't actually want to follow them. I wouldn't be happy if a Muslim prevented me from having a glass of wine in the name of their religion that I don't follow or subscribe to because obviously we know that many Muslims have that view that any alcohol at all, in fact some Christian denominations in Northern Ireland, I'm not happy with them subscribing that view on me. Again, I don't subscribe to Islam and therefore I won't follow its ways. So I wouldn't want anyone forcing that on me. Christians recognize that the majority of British people today are not Christians and therefore we cannot expect them to live Christian lives. And it's important we get this. And why do I say this? Well, growing up in Northern Ireland with many people who were, you know, supposedly devout Christian, you know, Sabbath day, holy, don't go to the cinema on a Sunday, you know, you've got to sing the songs a certain way, you speak a certain way. Um, what I seen growing up, was an enforcement of Christianity. 
so people would expect other people to follow it just because they say it's true. So it doesn't really matter so much about what the other person feels. You need to follow this because it's true. And I've met many people who've been scarred following along with very strict religious traditions that weren't actually based on scripture, but were simply that strict religious conditions. Um, back to, so I don't believe it should be taught exclusively. And in that sense, I agree with the court ruling, you know, to, to a loose extent. Um, should it be taught? Well, yes, absolutely. You know, we need to have religious education in schools as an academic subject, and it should be taught alongside other religions. In my view, for those who seek the truth, the truth will always rise to the top. If it's true, you will find it. Um, if we're going to be saved, so to speak, then we need to love the truth. It's the truth that will set us free. It's the truth that will help us receive salvation. Second Thessalonians chapter 2 and in verse 9 it says, The coming of the lawless one will be in accordance with how Satan works. He will use all sorts of displays of power through signs and wonders that serve the lie. And all the ways that wickedness deceives those who are perishing. They perish. Why? Because they refuse to love the truth and so be saved. I love that verse. It's about loving the truth. Um, so we want to teach Ari in schools, again, like a worldview. But those who seek the truth, let's be confident as Christians. Those who seek the truth and want to filter out things that aren't true, they will find it. They will find Jesus. They will find the truth. So I believe we teach Christianity along with other faiths in a religious education setting. We're not legislating for how the education system works. So we just hope that it'll be taught alongside other things. And then people can therefore then discover for themselves. Obviously, if we had our own school, you know, a Church of Christ school that I'm a part of, then we may teach it exclusively to those who've already subscribed to it and to our children who are coming up in the faith. But even for us parents out there, we want to feed our, our children information and knowledge and learning in order for them to make their decision. We want to guide them in that decision, but they need to make their own decision. So that's my thoughts today. And should Christianity be taught in schools? Yes, it should be taught in terms of the religious education standards of academia, but taught exclusively, I understand today in the secular society why it shouldn't necessarily be taught exclusively, but we should learn about all faiths. The truth will rise to the top. Those who treat, seek the truth will find it. Let me know your thoughts on this today. Please like if you enjoyed this video. Please share it on for other people. Please subscribe to that Bible guy. Let's get his word out there.